Hello, this is your anchorman, Ace Ackerman, with Channel 6 Pacific Northwest News. Today, we have a shocking new development on the sustainability of the Puget Sound and its wildlife. Our lead reporter is on the scene with a special interview on the Puget Sound's whale population. Good afternoon, this is Bonnie, a volunteer here at the Langley Whale Center on Whidbey Island, and I'll be uh, interviewing her about the local orca population of the Puget Sound. Okay. Okay, so first question, uh, how important are the orcas to the Puget Sound? Well, they are um, what I would call a keystone species, as you mentioned. They are the top of the food chain, both, and as you know, we have two types. We have transient orcas who are the meat eaters and the resident orcas that are the fish eaters. And the, both of them are the top of the food chain, and that means that they're, they're called an apex predator and they are an indicator of the health of the sound. So if there's like not a lot of them, the sound isn't very well. Yeah. And we have seen a, a very direct um, correlation between a healthy population, especially of the residents. Like this year, as you probably know, we have five new babies. That means that in the last two years, we had good salmon runs. They were healthy enough to be, get pregnant, stay pregnant, and have a healthy baby. The transients, the meat eaters, we have more and more of them, and that's because there's a lot of harbor seals and a lot of um, harbor porpoises. They're main food source. So that indicates, in a lot of ways, the sound is healthier than it has been. Okay. <clears throat> so, what do you believe? Like a, I know that it's been like the population has been getting lower mm -hmm. since mm -hmm. people originally started being here. But what do you believe a good target population should be? Well, um, when I first started paying attention to whales in 1994, there we had almost 100. And um, I think according to the Center for Whale Research up on um, San Juan Island, that the, a good population would be somewhere between 100 and 110 of the residents. And um, of course, now we have 81. So um, despite the new babies, we're still having problems. And if, if we don't have good salmon runs, then their population is going to continue to drop. We don't know exactly how many transients we have, but that's expanding, they're healthy, they're having babies, so for them, it's better. Okay, so uh, how do you think that people in Washington affect the orca, orca population in the Puget Sound? There's a lot of ways. Um, they're, they're really called urban whales because we're right next to Seattle and they, they do go down all, even all the way to Olympia. And um, there is pollution in the water, unfortunately. Um, there's um, toxins that even though we stopped using PCBs and things like that, they're still in the water. Um, there's a lot of farm runoff, industrial runoff. There's a lot more people out on their boats. Um, we're very concerned about a lot more oil tankers coming through and other container type ships. And, um, it's just that the more people there are here, the more we impact them. And so we need to try and not impact them and let them have as much food as they want and as much clean water as we can do for them. So what do you think that people can do to help? Well, um, you can um, create rain gardens in your yard, to which captures a lot of yard runoff. You can not use pesticides. You can be really careful about your use of plastic. Um, you can advocate for the whales like you're doing mm -hmm. and uh, talk to our politicians and our policy makers. Very important that you guys, young folks, have a lot more power in a lot of ways than we do. So it's constantly keeping the health of the sound and the health of the animals that we love in people's consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, so in your like personal opinion, what do you think that the main cause for the orca, orca population dropping? Well, the, the primary cause for the residents is that they overall don't have enough to eat. There's not enough salmon. Mm -hmm. There's other causes that, like I said, the health of the sound, the pollution, there's sound problems with um, sonar testing. Mm -hmm. um, there's um, years ago when there were captures, a whole, you know, 
a big group of whales were taken away from here, and therefore they weren't allowed to contribute to the population. And so that impacted them. But the, the main thing is the lack of salmon for the residents. And so if we can do everything we can to help the policymakers mm -hmm. create more salmon, then they'll be better. Yeah. So um, how does the changes in orca population help us determine how healthy the salmon is? Well, um, there, like I said, there's a very direct correlation. We have good salmon years. The next, say, two years for the orcas are good. Mm -hmm. When we have bad salmon years, their population drops within the next two years. They, be, especially because they are pregnant for 15 to 17 months. That's a long time. Yeah, <laughs> a very long time. And um, so you can see, like this year, like we have, like I said, we have the five new babies. So in the last two years, we've had pretty good salmon runs, so they have enough to eat, and they've been able to have their babies. Mm -hmm. When we don't, they don't, um, and then they also, the, some of the older ones start dying. Yeah, maybe they wouldn't if they had enough to eat. Mm -hmm. So, do um, you know like of any other keystone species in the Puget Sound that are showing effects of the pollution and that may affect the orca population and the overall health of the ecosystem? Well, and the good news is, like I said, we have more harbor seals and harbor porpoises, and that's good for the transients, and that's why we see more and more transients. Mm -hmm. And um, we do also see more humpback whales, which are also, you know, very large keystone. Yeah. So that's good news. That means there's a lot of small fish for them. And of course, small fish grow into big fish, and salmon eat smaller fish, so it starts way at the bottom of the food chain to have the health of the salmon. Um, so in that instance, they're doing that's a good thing that we're having that. Um, but harbor seals and harbor porpoises are also considered keystone species, so they are doing well. Um, it's going back again for the residents, it's the salmon that mm -hmm. is critical to them, and because they only eat one or two types of salmon. Um, if they say you have a good coho run, they don't care. <laughs> they want Chinook, and their second choice is Chum. So uh, that's really important to them. Right. Well, thank you very much. Thank for you, my thank you so much for doing this. Yep. Thanks for that. It has come to our attention that the Puget Sound is not as clean as we thought. An average of 26,600 gallons of water fall on a single home each year. And with an average of 4.5 million homes in the Puget Sound region, that is over 14 million pounds of toxic chemicals entering the Puget Sound annually. Now is that the kind of water you want to be fishing in? But lucky for you, we have some top tips on how to reduce your pollution on the Puget Sound. One way you can reduce your pollution is by planting a rain garden. Now what rain gardens do is when water comes down off of roofs or sidewalks, all the water runs into it and all the soil and plants filter out all the pollutants and turn them into nutrients for the ground. So all that gas and stuff from the sidewalks and stuff from the roof does not go into the river or the Puget Sound and everything is good. Another way you can reduce your car! Another way you can reduce your pollution on the Puget Sound and its wildlife is when you're washing your car, do it here in the gravel or in your grass. Because when all the water runoff goes off into your driveway, it'll go off into the storm drain or the street, and there it'll go into the river and into the sound. But when you do it in your grass or gravel, it will go into the ground and all the pollutants will be filtered out from the dirt. So don't do this. Do this! Breaking news! We have a live report now that there is a pollution in progress! We are live on the scene with police officers that are delicately handling the situation. <laughs> no!
You realize what you were about to do? No. By dumping that soda into that drain, it was going to go into the river and make its way all the way into the Puget Sound and mess up with all the fish and the entire ecosystem down there. Oh. Oh, come on, buddy. You're going to the slammer. Well, I could say that was the most interesting thing that has happened all week. It's been very slow. Did I forget to mention, I'm a cat. This is Ace Ackerman. I've been to the doctor and I'm a person again. And I will see you next time on Channel 6 Pacific Northwest News.